This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to talk about why Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger hate Bitcoin so much, especially in the context I've been getting a lot of questions about Charlie Munger's recent comments about Bitcoin being disgusting and contrary to the interests of civilization. The full quote, they were asking him what he thinks about Bitcoin success. He says, of course, I hate the Bitcoin success. That's a funny way to say it, the Bitcoin success. I, and then he goes on to say, I should say modestly that I think the whole damn development is disgusting and contrary to the interests of civilization. And I'll leave the criticism to others. Warren Buffett was a little bit more diplomatic saying he didn't want to offend Bitcoiners. Uh, but let's go in, take a little bit closer look at what Munger means. And I, spent, I think it's especially interesting that he says that Bitcoin is disgusting and contrary to the interest of civilization. So I just wanted to look a little bit into Charlie Munger's career and what he might consider to be civilization. So he's obviously Warren Buffett's right-hand man, his, his right-hand man, his uh, business partner. And they've been, uh, they're both from... Nebraska, both from Omaha, and they've been investing together for many, many years. Charlie Munger started off as a lawyer and then went on to become a, uh, a very successful investor. And we're going to go through and look at some of his biggest invest investments and really where he made his money. Now, unfortunately, the bulk of his money has been made by investing in financial companies, especially big banks, and also in junk food companies. And this is very ironic that he would, he would be uh, criticizing Bitcoin and saying it's contrary to the interests of civilization when a huge percentage of his money has come from investing in Coca-Cola, which is uh, probably okay in moderation. But Coke has been, Coke and its products have been an absolute disaster, especially for poor people and if, especially for people in developing, uh, developing parts of the world, Africa, uh, India, Mexico. Here's an article from the New York Times about how uh, there's no water in various Mexican towns, but you can get a lot of Coca-Cola. Uh, here's an, India, uh, an article from the Times of India also talking about diabetes in India. This is, these are well-known facts ab about, uh, about Coke. He has a famous, uh, Charlie Munger has a famous speech in which he actually talked about from, he did sort of a thought experiment around the origins of Coca-Cola and said, how can we create a highly addictive drink that has salt and how can we use it, uh, get more and more people to drink it instead of water? It's a very brilliant essay, but when you step back and look at it and think about it in the context of what, uh, what sugary products like Coke have done to the health of the world, this article takes on a, a, new, a new sinister light. I should say, if you're enjoying this video and finding it useful, please hit that subscribe and like button. Maybe share it with a few friends, especially people who follow Buffett and Munger. Now, in terms of uh, Munger's own business practices, the companies he invests in have a long history of, uh, of, of having problems, discrimination, etc. Here's a, um, a lawsuit against Court Furniture, which was owned by Wesco Financial, one of Munger's big investments, and he was the... Uh, uh, he was the C CEO for many years in which uh, uh, black employees were paid a lot less than white employees and treated very, uh, treated very badly. Another one of Munger's really big investments, along with Buffett, uh, they've invested in Kraft Heinz as well as the predecessor, which was Kraft Foods. Kraft Foods is really makes a lot of the food that, unfortunately, I grew up eating in the 70s and really calling it food is quite a uh, quite an exaggeration. I used to drink uh, this drink called Tang, which was who knows who knows what was in it. It was mostly artificial color and sugar. So it's important to keep this in mind when Buffett is talking about the interests of civilization. That really this is where his own money came from, investing in Kraft Foods, which bought Tang, uh, Oreo cookies, uh, and then of course we move on to the big banks. And for someone who's made a ton of money investing in U.S. banks to try to take the moral high ground is very, it's, I would say it's fairly, fairly hypocritical. Here's an article about how Wells Fargo helped to launder money uh, for drug traffickers from the Sinaloa cartel. And the list of, I don't have to go through all of the, uh, all of the, the problems with the big banks, especially the U.S. big banks over the years. Here is an interesting chart, though, that shows how many companies 
uh, how many U.S. banks and other financial companies that Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway and Charlie Munger were invested in that really benefited from the uh, from the bailouts after the great financial crisis of 2008 to 2009. And the name is just uh, the list of these companies is a list of really bad companies. Uh, Wells Fargo, Goldman Sachs, Bank of America. These are not loved names by any means. And they've been surrounded by scandals for the past 20 years. And unfortunately, have received a lot of government bailouts. And this was, uh, there's a real conflict of interest when you have people like Munger and Buffett talking about how important the bailouts were when they they own huge stakes in the companies that were bailed out. Even after the great financial crisis, uh, Wells Fargo got fined, ended up getting fined $3 billion for opening up all these fake accounts without people's, uh, people's permission. So this is another, Wells Fargo is obviously another huge Buffett and Munger uh, investment. I'll link to this article uh, more about Buffett, Munger, and the and the uh, bank bailout, so you can look at it in detail. Buffett and Munger were also huge investors in Moody's, which was one of the great, uh, one of the companies that was really behind the housing bubble, and they were really responsible, along with uh, along with S and P and Fitch and the the bond rating agencies, for inflating uh, the ratings on bonds and directly contributing to the housing crisis. So again, this is something to keep in mind. This is, uh, this is how the man has made his money, and this is how, what he thinks a great, uh, a great civilization is. We've talked before about the revolving door uh, between the government, regulatory agencies, and Wall Street. Here's a great uh, Venn diagram that shows the overlap between people who've worked at Goldman Sachs and then go on to make policy in the federal government and vice versa, really the revolving door. And this is, this is what has made Buffett and Munger rich. Meanwhile, these are not guys you want to talk to about technological developments. They've been very bearish on inter- the internet and the whole internet revolution since the early 90s. Buffett finally woke up in 2015 or 2016, and he did a smart thing. He invested in Amazon and Apple after bad-mouthing tech companies for 15 or 20 years. But these are not people who are on the cutting edge. They were brilliant investors in their day when the U.S. had these very large uh, anti-competitive monopolistic companies that uh, controlled the population, didn't just control the population in terms of what they ate and where they banked, but also controlled all the jobs. This was a very closed economy in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, when these giant companies had so much control from the newspaper companies, which of course Buffett and Munger benefited from, to uh, all the other, uh, the junk food companies and the banks, etc. And one of the things the internet revolution has done, it has of course created its own monopolistic problems, but it has also completely bro- blown open the field to competition. It's put the newspapers uh, against the wall. It's put a lot of uh, these old companies out of uh, business. And now fintech and Bitcoin and the Bitcoin revolution are really hurting the traditional uh, traditional banking system. And so we can see people like this who benefited from the existing fiat financial system would not like Bitcoin. But if you listen to them when it comes to tech, uh, you're definitely getting bad advice. And this is one reason that Buffett and Munger and Ber- Berkshire Hath- Hathaway have been underperforming underperforming the NASDAQ and even the S&P uh, for many years uh, many years now. The famous quote about Bitcoin being rat poison or rat poison squared, I like this meme because it really does show you uh, the uh, who gets hurt by Bitcoin, which is the traditional uh, fiat uh, financial companies. So to summarize, Buff Munger's made most of his money through investments in real estate, big banks, junk food companies. He's the temp- typical cantillionaire I like this coinage. It's a coinage of millionaire or billionaire plus the Cantillon effect or Cantillon effect, where basically those who stand closest to the money printer, people on Wall Street, people who make investments, uh, and especially people who are tied into Wall Street and the whole banking system, which is uh, which leeches off the central bank and many of the same people uh, go and work for these various organizations. But these people have been standing, people like Munger and Buffett, have been standing right next to the money printer for their entire lives. And yet they have the nerve here to try to take 
the high, the moral high ground. They've both benefited tremendously from terrible central bank policies that the Federal Reserve has implemented that have really increased wealth inequality, have pumped up valuations of both real estate and stock. And it's, it's amazing to me because Buffett and Munger are obviously very smart people, but for them to have this giant blind spot, uh, they should be, if I were them, I would just be very quiet and uh, not go out of my way to criticize, uh, to criticize Bitcoin. I'll link to this article on the Cantillian effect if you want to read more about that. I think here's a, this is a great case of uh, cognitive dissonance or uh, being trapped in the wrong mental models, which Munger, of course, has spent a lot, a lot of time talking about, talking about cognitive errors. Famous Munger quote, we have a habit, habit of distorting the facts until they become bearable for our own views. And Munger, even being aware of this, falls into the, into the trap. And uh, I, I would say that I've had a lot of respect for Munger and Buffett over the years, but the, the, the more time passes, the less I really like these figures. Uh, they seem like dinosaurs to me that want to keep us in an old form of civilization. I've written a book about Buffett, and I've since really revised, uh, revised my views. They were certainly great investors, if you look in the rearview mirror. But you can see looking forward that uh, value investing, I've made multiple videos, videos about this, value investing doesn't work. It's very reliant on these, this sort of monopolistic uh, uh, economy that the U.S. used to have, where you have all these uh, uh, oligopolies. By contrast, Bitcoin is the hardest money the world has ever seen, and great civilizations are built on hard money. We've seen in this video what Munger consider, considers through his life's work to be the apex of civilization, investing in junk food companies and the big banks. But what I would suggest is that great civilizations are not built on fiat money, which is really how Buffett and Munger have made their fortunes. Great civilizations are built on hard money, the gold standard in the past and the Bitcoin standard in the future. If we look at uh, if we look at Europe under the gold standard, the great example always is the Belle Epoque at the end of the 19th century and early 20th century, leading basically that 40-year period before 30 or 40-year period before World War I broke out when we had this real flowering of civilization. It's called the Golden Age, and it was the age of the gold standard as well, when you had all these innovations in art and music and technology. You had peace, you had economic prosperity, etc. And I would suggest that this is really what uh, a great civilization looks like, not the horrible, disposable, junk food civilization that Munger and Buffett have done so much to contribute to and benefit from. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.